medcram.com. Welcome to another MedCram coronavirus update. Number of deaths has gone from 565 up to 638. That's an increase over day of 73. And that's exactly what it was yesterday. So it looks as though we've got a linear increase here in the last couple of days. I am very sad to say that one of those deaths was uh, Dr. Li Wenliang, who was credited as one of the original doctors who recognized that there was a outbreak and then succumbed to the very infection that he was warning about. And for those of us that are in the healthcare industry, doctors, nurses, respiratory therapists, all sorts of people who every day go to work to fight disease, a comrade of ours has fallen. And it gives us pause to remember that this is not a numbers game. There are real people with families behind every one of these numbers. In terms of the infected, that's went from 28,274 to 31,440. Interestingly, yesterday, that number represented an increase of 3,700. Today, only an increase of 3,166. Could this possibly be where things are starting to level out? I'm eternally optimistic, but I'm not sure. So interestingly, if you go to this website called World Meters dot info backslash coronavirus backslash you come to this dashboard that we referenced a couple of days ago and shows here the number of coronavirus cases of course and the number of deaths and the number that's recovered and what you'll see here is the total cases and if you notice very carefully you'll start to see that it looks as though it's starting to layer off but it may be difficult to actually assess that from the way this graph is laid out so if you keep scrolling down you'll see this link here that says more case statistics. If you click on that, you can see here the coronavirus cases and there's a little bit more detail. Here's the part that's interesting. If you look at daily cases worldwide on the graph here, the bar graph, you'll start to see here that February 6th for the second day in a row, there seems to be somewhat of a decrease. At least there's a decrease here on February 5th. It may be that the data hasn't all come in yet for February 6th, it's unclear. But that is certainly something that is noteworthy and something to watch. And then there's the growth factor, which is basically taking the derivative or the slope of that increase. And that's what we have here for the growth factor. You can see early on there was quite variable. And then it's been, generally speaking, just above one in terms of growth. And here again, for the second day in a row, it seems, if all the data is in and is correct, it would seem to suggest that the daily cases growth factor is finally, for the first time here, going below one for two days in a row, potentially. And hopefully that's going to lead us in the right direction. And then again, here we have the total change in number. It seems as though we were in the 29, mid-20s here in terms of change in total number. We've dipped below 20, down to 15, and now we're down to 11%. We can only hope that that is true. We're going to have a better understanding of what's going on here in the next couple of days over the weekend. Which, by the way, as we did last week, we will take a break and we'll start up at the beginning of next week. I want to put these numbers into perspective, however. Right now in the United States, we have a flu epidemic. I'm sure that's globally as well. About 19 million people have gotten the flu this year. 180,000 of them have been hospitalized here in the United States. And believe it or not, 10,000 of them have died this flu season. 68 of those 10,000 were children. In terms of those people that are recovering, I wanted to make a note of that. Yesterday, the total number officially that recovered was 1,178. That's gone up by about 369 to 1,547. And we're going to see this number increasing. A couple of weeks ago, we were in the few hundred, and now things have taken off to 30,000. So we're going to start to see definitive things here one way or the other. I will say, though, Dr. Lee had a kind of an unusual course. If you look into his history, uh, he was hospitalized on 1-12-2020. Of course, by that point, they had suspected along the way that he may have had this virus, and he was tested numerous times. It wasn't positive until 
February 1st, 2020. He passed away on 2-6-20. Or should I say he passed away and actually on 2-7 because it was, I believe, Friday morning already in China at the time that he passed away. So why was it that he came down with symptoms and yet for a good week, two weeks, no positive coronavirus on testing? I don't know if there was a quality issue or whether or not he just didn't have viremia. Not exactly sure why this was the case. I want to talk about what's going on in Canada because we've had a couple more cases in Vancouver. First case in Vancouver was related to a gentleman in his 40s who recently had traveled to the area in China, Wuhan. Um, and then there was a woman in her 50s in Vancouver. This was the second case in her 50s who became ill on February 1st, 2020, after a husband and wife from Wuhan had visited her. And so there was a female and a male in their 30s that were visiting, and they were all staying in the same house. So when this lady became ill, and she was with someone that had come from Wuhan, they tested her, and she was positive for the coronavirus. It looks as though they have now tested these people as well after being in home isolation. And of course, they are both positive as well, which is not surprising given the fact that the woman in her 50s probably got it from those in their 30s. What's interesting is that these people who are in their 30s, generally young speaking here, had very mild symptoms, maybe only a slight cold, and then it went away. What's significant, though, about this case is this represents the first person-to-person -person transmission in Canada. So far, however, it appears as though everybody is doing well, at least the cases in North America. No one's been hospitalized because they needed to be. It was more for quarantine and isolation. As it seems that young and healthy people are better apt to deal with this virus, those of us who are a little run down, let's take this opportunity to get extra sleep and to prepare ourselves in case there is a epidemic here of coronavirus, but more importantly, because there already is a flu virus issue. Thanks for joining us.